Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Sovereign Society podcast. I'm your guide, Sabrina Riccio, and I'm really excited because this is going to be a conversation that I feel is going to be a, a true beacon of inspiration because having the ladies, Marion Kennedy of Daily Drills here, I'm just so inspired to see how much the two of you have been slaying it in such a short amount of time like way to go ladies <laughs> thank you we're so excited to be chatting with you today yeah i know we've been you know this this conversation has been pushed back and forth and back and back because of like crazy health issues and you know there's there's a thing that i truly believe in divine timing and you know i'm curious to i just want to dive in I'm curious to hear, like, what was the the hunch, that inner knowing that it was time to build a clothing line? Because I don't think either of you have really had experience in building clothes or designing clothes. So I'm curious to hear what was that hunch that was like, all right, now is the time for us to to do this. Now is the time for us to really create this brand together. Yeah, I feel like Kennedy and I really talk about timing a lot and how different things have led us to what, what we're doing right now, which is daily drills. Um, the timing was actually crazy perfect. It was during COVID when we launched our brand or when we actually conceptualized. It was July of 2020. So all of us were at home, um, not doing a ton during the day in LA. We were very shut down, um, right. but we were always circulating business ideas, always had different ideas. And we're texting each other back and forth a lot during that time, just kind of creative ideas, different things we were inspired by, different things we could be doing, um, different ideas of what to do during COVID. Mm -hmm. And Ken one Wednesday night was like, I think we should start a clothing line. I know someone that has extra stock fabric, like, are you in? And all I had to do was say yes. And I think a lot of times, if she would have texted me that in 2019 or 2021, yeah. I might not have said yes, or I probably would have said yes, but it might not have actually worked out. And it, we might've been a little more hesitant, but I love when you say, um, you talk about divine timing. Cause it's so true. The timing was perfect. It was like, it, we both had full-time jobs, but we also both had a lot of extra time on the outside with the pandemic. So that's like really how we started. And then four months later is when our, when our official, um, public launch was. That's amazing because like, what was it that I'm curious to hear because so many of us, we, we shift, you know, our path or path, like we, we have like a detour and sometimes that detour is better. Like when you were younger girls, what was it the thing that you thought you wanted to do with your life? Or what was it, you know, what was your big dream of, of the work you saw yourself doing? I mean, how young are we talking? I wanted to be Britney Spears <laughs> until like, no, we wanted to be <laughs> Hilton. Hilton. I loved um, entertainment world, but college, I definitely thought like I wanted to go into marketing or something with like a PR emphasis. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't necessarily see myself in the fashion sphere. I always liked fashion, but I felt like because I didn't go to school for it or I didn't know like the top designers and I couldn't list them all off. I didn't know their biography. Like I wasn't qualified basically. So mm. I actually kind of leaned more into like the food and health and wellness space. Cause that really interests me as well. Um, but somehow I, and like you're saying, like our paths just kind of changed. And like, especially like when we went into daily drills, you know, we thought we were going to be active wear. And then we were got, we were getting super excited about designing and innovating more fashion forward pieces. So that kind of led us to where we sit today, which is, pieces that you can wear like a little bit more casually, but have the power to style up. So it is pretty interesting. Going back yeah. to your question, I definitely didn't think I was going to be in fashion or anything like that. Yeah. I, it's funny because I never like knew exactly what I wanted to be when I grew up. Like I could never put a nail of what, what I wanted to do. Um, but in middle school, I like made these duct tape headbands and sold them on the playground. And then in high school, I made- Wow, early entrepreneur. Look at yes, her go. I, <laughs> and then I made- t-shirts that I sold. So like, I loved having different businesses, creating different things. I think I had five different businesses and I would always be at like the children's business fair. So nerdy, but like, I always loved creating new ideas that no one else had. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that that's kind of, and I've always loved fashion and my mom's love fashion and taught me about that from a young age. So it, it's funny, like my entrepreneurial spirit 
And like my love for fashion kind of has collided in my 20s, but I never really knew that like I would own a brand. I always thought I'd want to sit front row at a fashion show, but I never would think that it would be my brand. So, right. Interesting. Yeah. Because it's interesting when we like start to look at that bigger picture and we, I like to say, really observe the breadcrumbs of what was, you know, in our earlier years and to really understand that may, while it may not be that specifically, there's elements of that that is a, a deeper um, a deeper part or even like the the blood of what we're here to do today. I know for me, um, you know, I, I always knew in a way that I wanted to do, um, cause I went to school for marketing as well. And I was in orange County. So I went, I, when I was at Chapman, like I knew, um, I wanted to go ahead and create like a blog. And that was when social media was really rising. Uh, like Instagram was surface level where people had shitty filters and, yeah. you know, <laughs> but I, yeah. And I was a music journalist at that time, but like, you know, and even though I'm not that today, I've been, I've been able to teach at festivals. And I think like with you two, you know what I mean? Here you are making like headband tape when you were a kid and now you've evolved to that. You, Kennedy, wanted to be Paris Hilton and she was, she was considered like an innovative icon in fashion. You know what I mean? So there's, there's, there's purpose to that and there's, there's breadcrumbs to really, um, to pick those pieces together when you're really ready to get out of your own way and you're really ready to step into your, your purpose and your power. Uh, so with that, I, I want to hear like, what do you think is the bigger purpose of daily drills? Because, you know, there, there is a rise of sustainable and ethical business and a lot more around sustainable fashion as well. And I think, you know, you're seeing so many more people thrifting or you're seeing more people, um, like you saying, like, how can you be more um, multi-purpose in, in your fashion and your pieces? So I'm curious to hear what was that drive? Yeah, that's a great question. So on, this, on the note of like multi-purpose and sustainability, I think really having versatile clothes, clothing, so like transitional wear pieces that you really can repurpose throughout your day, throughout your week, throughout different seasons as well. Our oversized hoodie is actually reversible, so you can wear it two days. So I'll literally just pack that crew neck when I take a trip um, because I can wear it two different ways. So yeah. it really is offering that added value and added purpose. So that's definitely something we're very intentional with our designs like it's it's all cut and sew it's all you know we make it and we don't make it but we come up with the design concepts and so really having that multi-purpose is kind of like the way that we are coining ourselves as sustainable it's not as much like fabric driven it's more just like the multi-use and the fact that you know I can wear it um, I share it with my husband we can actually both wear the unisized crew necks and just having like multi-uses yeah, the lifespan of the clothing I think is important and then also going back to your question about like what our, our mission is or what the higher purpose of daily drills is, yeah. obviously we're a clothing line, like at the surface and that's where how people find us and what people buy from us. But we also, in our logo, we have an exclamation point and that's like really what we're trying to share. We're trying to share spontaneity. We're trying to share positivity. We're trying to make clothes that you feel good in, that you feel excited and confident in at your business meeting or that you feel great in at your Pilates class, yeah. whatever you're doing. Um, so the exclamation point is really like the brand mission statement on its own. Cause like whatever an exclamation point means to you, it brings most of us excitement and yeah. energy. We actually got exclamation points tattooed on us after our first year of business. <laughs> so it's like, that's kind of what we're trying to drive everyone towards and, and give girls that. Yeah. Okay. First of all, I just want to say, I want you to eliminate that word try and believe that you are. Hey. Like you're not trying, you're doing. I tell that with all of my clients when they're saying like, oh, I'm trying to do this. It's like, no, bitch, you're doing. Like, you know, yeah, give yourself more that. credit. Yeah. So I like to, anytime I have people on the podcast and they're like, oh, I'm trying. I like to <laughs> correct them and give them like that realization is that stop doubt because trying can bring a lot of that doubt right of, like you know if that like oh I'm trying this out but like you're not confident and that to me is also what you know that exclamation point can be um so but you have to you have to make sure that 
and this isn't just you two per se, but in general, like if you are out there and you're stepping out of your comfort zone in business and doing something like there's in your heart you want to create, but you still have no idea how the hell it's going to so actualize. Good. Like yeah. you have to have faith in in what you're creating. So I'm curious to hear how your journey has been of allowing your faith to to really be the forefront of designing this brand. It's interesting because even on my ta- on my arm, I have tattooed um, a Mother Mary, and she says the mystery of faith. And so mm-hmm. I think there's there's a purpose to that of like having mystery in that faith. So I'm curious to hear um, how that has been really the blood and the driving force of daily drills and the expansion of your brand. Yeah. yeah. I really, I really I mean, we both, both truly, truly believe like Daily Drills was God inspired the time, the time in alignment, alignment like Ralph Ratch touched on it, on it. But we have a we third, third partner who is our manufacturing partner. And, and literally, literally, she reached out to me through LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Why, did why did I respond? Why did I have a phone call? call? We both, we both started, started working for her, her doing freelance. freelance. You know, you know the, the way, the way that that everything, everything lined, lined up, up. I feel like, I feel like all, all we had to do was say yes and step through the doors. The doors and I felt like in the past, there were so many jobs, jobs where I was trying, trying so hard to make, hard to make, it, make work, it work. And I was like, like you know, really, really felt, felt like I was like having, having to like shove an elbow, elbow my way to the top. And I really, really felt like the girls was just something that we had to say yes and step into. And like, we felt so much wind out of our back of the gate. Like, yes, we have both our social followings. Yes, we are pretty well connected in LA with them. None of support, support and momentum, and momentum we, we had at off the ground was, was insane. insane. I mean, we, we were filling, filling out, out of our apartment, apartment for the first couple months, months and, we and we thought we were going to be filling out of our apartment for like a year or two. Year or two. Like, we, weren't we weren't prepared, prepared to quit our jobs. We, weren't we, weren't prepared. Prepared. we didn't think yeah. we, had we had a bigger vision, vision but, but we didn't think that like, like the momentum and the speed at which we would be selling was going to be so strong. And I put that back to my faith and like God and like the momentum that came with like saying yes and stepping into something that was for us. And into, and into an open, open door. door. So, so honestly, honestly, I feel like, I feel like our faith, faith has been such a huge, huge aspect, aspect in the journey of daily, daily drills. drills and, like, and like, literally, literally like, you know, we, have, we have, it's us, us too. And we have a full-time, full-time hire and turn and turn. Like, 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 we're looking, we're looking to expand and hire right now. And like, like going, going back, back to the court, okay, like, this is from God. Like, he has a plan. And we, again, get to like, follow him in that. There's a verse, it's like, man plans his steps. But the, but the but God, God like, like paves, paves the way, the kind, way of kind of thing, and it's like, like we're, we're doing, doing the work and saying yes. yes but at the end of the day, day like there's, there's, a, there's a moment of surrender. surrender. Like okay, okay, okay well, we don't, we don't have, have to grip it. it. We don't we have, have to be like, like well, what's well, going to happen? This is all because, because like wasn't, wasn't even from, from us. us. Like it was from God. And I also think it gives you a little bit the weight of your shoulders. Like like if it's if it's for you, then you're not going to be able to screw it up. So I think that allows us to be more creative to try new things to like. Like not, not hold on, hold on so tight to, to give other, other, other people our same connections, connections to, give to give other people our, our ideas, ideas or our things, things that we've learned. learned. It makes it us makes like live a lot more open handed, which is obviously, obviously the way we're, way we're supposed, supposed to. to but sometimes, sometimes when you're not where you're supposed, supposed to be, you're like you're in that, that job that you're super stuck, stuck in, in and you don't have that momentum. It's harder to be like that. So I think that's an interesting place to start a business out of thinking this is something I want to do and it's for me, but it's also not the biggest thing in my life. I love that. Yeah, I know for me. And, you know, I think, like I said, it's absolutely amazing that you guys have like grown exponentially and the amount of time that you have. Um, and I think, like you said, like when those moments come, it's, it's so divinely guided. And the fact that you've been able to be in that space of surrender and just continue to trust the process and honor the journey of that. I think that's, that's, it takes time to uh, cultivate, you know, and, and that relationship with God, you know, maybe some people listening don't resonate with that God spirit, whatever, whatever that represents the divine for you. And, you know, there's sometimes too, where it's like, there can be trial and error in that. And I just talked about this last week uh, with Ashley Pollard, and we we're talking about like mistakes are also inevitable in business. Mm-hmm. And you have to trust that those div- those mistakes can also be divinely guided um, because they they give you a deep they give you wisdom and they will help you understand what not to do as well. Um, but whether it's up to you if you're going to continue to repeat those patterns. Um, or if you're going to go ahead and like take that nugget of wisdom and then go from it. So I'm curious, like with you guys scaling and you guys growing, like what are your non-negotiables to make sure that your 
coming back to center and you're really cultivating uh, this work-life balance so that you can continue to just be that open channel to receive the divine guidance as to uh, where you're taking your business uh, next. Yeah, some non-negotiables. I think for us, we're really big on company culture just in general. We're around each other all day. Um, and really feed off of each other's energy. And mm -hmm. so we're very protective of like our space and um, just like our attitudes, our dispositions, and it's like very sensitive to that. And like who comes in and who's working with us just because we really, we want to be a company who's like inward, inward facing rather than like, okay, here's our like sexy mission statement. We're so philanthropic. It's like, okay, how can we create like community and positivity and um, positivity through um, just like our, our team so I think that's like a huge non-negotiable for us transparency um honestly providing I feel like we're pretty good with boundaries like when our off and on hours are did yeah. you add anything to that yeah I feel like having everyone on the same page and all of that really helps and obviously we're a small team so we're luckily able to do that at this point and that's something that we're, we try to protect going forward but even with our Instagram followers or the people that are our customers, we have like a super cool relationship with them. Yeah. I would say um, online, we constantly are asking them questions on our stories or getting their feedback or asking them what they want us to create our next mm -hmm. round or what colors we want um, that they want to see from us. So I think just having like open communication within the office and in positivity within the office, but also like open communication with a customer or a follower or someone that feels like their voice is heard too, I think is super important to us. And that's what we want all of our customers to think like, oh, they listened to me and they made this literally for me to buy. And then they're excited to do that. Um, I think has helped us a ton. Yeah, I agree. I love that. I And I, I you know what, and it's, it's really beautiful too, because right now, and especially like thanks to social media, even though it's been testy for a lot of people lately and mm -hmm. a lot of people's engagements have been really wonky and things like that. I think the important thing that we need to remember is that this is about a community building space. And, you know, these times, the, the golden age is about uh, community and collaboration mm -hmm. and what better way than to collaborate, but to see, um, you know, your audience or your customers in a way as an equal to you too. I don't think there needs to be necessarily like a hierarchy of like, we're better than you or whatever. Um, that can be a big thing and it has been a big thing, but I really feel like we're dismantling that piece mm -hmm. um, so that, you know, we're understanding like this is a collaborative experience and in a way it's the best way to also sell yeah, <laughs> because yeah. otherwise, you know, that that's what they want rather than just sitting on a whole bunch of inventory or whatever. That's, yeah, yeah. Uh, not conducive to supporting the needs or like the desire of your your audience. So I'm curious to hear like, you know, and I think this is this is something that I've been really um, excited to see more of, especially in the world of fashion, is a lot more inclusion of different body types and all um, people of color. I also am like, praying to see more like people with disabilities also like I've seen a lot like for instance I was looking um like an ad from Rihanna's Fenty yeah. line came through and I saw that she had an amputee mm -hmm. like showcasing a bra and I thought that was absolutely amazing so I'm curious to hear too like are, what are your um, goals on being a more inclusive brand, especially because, like you said, you guys were thinking you're going to start with activewear, but you've gone with a little more like leisure. Um, uh, it's kind of like a chameleon is the best <laughs> the word that's coming to me right now. But you're you're being more versatile with your clothes. What's a promise that you're willing or that you're knowing that you want to bring more inclusion? Because I know for me, like I was. I grew up really curvy um, as a little girl because I, as a young girl, because I had a lot of trauma. So I gained like a lot of excess weight. It was really hard for me to feel seen or heard, mm -hmm. especially in fashion. So I had a lot of uh, body shaming and insecurities in that sense. Um, but like, 
great. Like, you know, I've done a lot of work on myself to get to where I am now and it's constantly growing, but there's a lot of other people out there who I know want to be recognized and seen and just like included. Like I see um, brands like meet the label that has, that goes like to four XL and you know, they're, they're being more inclusive on having them in active wear and things like that. So I'm curious to hear like, how are you choosing? Because I don't necessarily even think this is a trend. I think this is really yeah, yeah. Um, the future. And how are you choosing to bring more of this inclusion yeah. um, into your brand as well? Well, we love that that's the future as well. Like We definitely want people to see themselves in our pieces. And I think so often women look at models or fashion or whatever, and they don't see themselves in the clothes. So they're not going to buy it. They're not going to believe in the brand. They're not going to buy into it. And it's not just about like growing our customer base, but like we want people to see themselves in daily drills and we want daily drills to be for everybody. It's not just women. It's not just men. It's, it's, it's for everybody. Um, and all body types and sizes, unfortunately, since we are still so small, we're only able to offer like a certain size range. And honestly, we've been modeling most of the (laughs) stuff because, um, budget, but we have started to, you know, hire different body types because also people just want to see like when they're scrolling our pages and they, they want to see how like the clothes are going to fit on them and what size they should get. And OK, well, you know, it, and we'll even do like try on. So like if we can't afford to, um, you know, hire a bunch of models for a shoot, we'll like have different body types come and try it on and showcase that and do like little fit guides on our Instagram. So that's been really helpful. And just awesome. also, like at the beginning it's been me and Ralph like fitting a lot of this stuff and we're just more like naturally more petite. And so we were kind of fitting it and then we're like, okay, we're just going to size up, but like, we don't have an ass. So we don't know how it, how it fits. So <laughs> well, if we, you ever need an ass, I've got one for you. So we like, we want to make sure that it's supportive and that it's lifting. And like, so now we've started to like lean on other people to fit it for us in different sizes. So it, it, it definitely is something that we are still growing in and still striving towards. We have a lot of goals around it that we haven't been able to quite tap into yet, but we definitely want everyone to feel like they belong, you know, with daily drills and that they can picture yeah. themselves. Maybe they're not going to feel comfortable wearing our, you know, shorty shorts, but they're going to feel comfortable wearing our drills leggings. Like we want it to be for everybody. Um, mm-hmm. so we're really excited about that piece. And I think that there's definitely a lot more like discovery and inclusion to be had. Yeah. And the interesting thing that I think is so many people like our most asked DM is what size should I be? What size should I get? Yeah. Which is super interesting because I'm like, I kind of know what size I would get. I'm not, thankfully I'm not someone because I have a a twin sister and moms that are all in a mom that's different sizes than me. So I've always like gone up in size or gone down in size and like, like how things fit differently, different bodies differently. But I think since so many girls are so curious about their size, we try to have like an open dialogue on our Instagram. They send us like, I'm like, okay, send me your normal numeric sizes and I'll make a recommendation. Like, do you like your stuff a little bigger? Do you like your stuff a little smaller? And it's me on the other end of it. I think they think it's more like a customer support person, but we try to always since like we can't have that diversity of model that we want to, that we're striving to have one day. Just like if anyone has a question or like, my body is like this. I'm like, art. my sister literally is those exact sizes and she ordered this. Or um, our other friend is this size, she ordered that. Like, I think that would be perfect. Like we always are trying to have that line of communication where they feel like they can ask us too. I think it's important. And also we need to get our moms to model for one because I feel like- (laughs) I love that. Body type, too. color, everything. Yeah. Well, Frankie Shop does it and they do like um, these beautiful women that are like 65 probably with like full gray hair and they're gorgeous. Like they're- they're full models you can just tell they're gorgeous but just having like those different sizes yeah. those different ages is so cool just the too inclusivity factor, yeah. yeah totally i mean i mean who knows maybe that's i'm just gonna plant this seed maybe that's your mother's day advertising i, know. <laughs> <laughs> I think you would say yes yes <laughs> That's what I mean. I I think you know what I mean, but I think there there is that that inclusion because, like, for instance, I know like my mom, like, she gets she's having such a hard time finding clothes that also like work with her. And there's you know I mean, granted, I don't I don't know if necessarily she's going to be wearing exactly everything I'm wearing, but like I think it's important to bring the the beauty in all sizes, age, yes. ages, shapes, and colors. I think that's something that 
Um, I'm grateful. Like I said, we're finally living in a time where that's um, acknowledged and it's not bypassed or um, kind of like taboo in that sense. Yeah. But uh, speaking of taboos and stigmas, I want to know what was the drive? Because uh, you guys clearly are best friends and you're working in business and there's been so much of that, like, you know, don't mix business and, and friendship and pleasure. Um, so I'm curious to hear, like, what was the drive of like, you know what, we're going to dismantle this damn conditioning and stigma around, you know, working with your friend and doing business with your friends. Like, I'm curious to hear, like, did you guys like when you when you started your friendship and did you think you guys would be starting like a like did you see like a did you like future trip into seeing like hey mm -hmm. this could be a potential like business partner that i can work with or i'm curious to hear like what was uh what has been your experience really of breaking that stigma around like mixing business and, and pleasure and friendship and also the importance of cultivating boundaries within between the two of you as well um so I don't want to, so that there is like a, a balance and a harmony and not so much of like a codependency. And you can also both be in your power with like speaking like, Hey, this is what I like. And this is what I like. And I'm sure disagreements have come up between you guys, you know, it's, it's, it's inevitable. Um, it's human nature. Like we can always have disagreements. They don't have to be like explosive disagreements, but it's like, you know what? I like this color more than this one or whatever. Like I'm curious to hear, um, how that whole journey has really, uh, made you even like a, a stronger person. I feel like I love that question. I feel like we have so much to say. We always talk on this topic because it's super interesting. Every podcast we're on, they ask like, Oh, y'all are girl, y'all are girls, best friends and business partners. Like, do you ever get in fights? And it's just an interesting question, you know, that we've heard a lot that maybe guys that are in our exact same position wouldn't get that question if they were business partners with their best friend. Um, so we've talked internally yeah. about that a lot. That well, a lot they haven't been on my podcast yet because yeah. I would have no problem asking yeah, two men exactly. that question yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you ask it in such a good way. Like, I know that that's a stigma and that you're, you guys are here to break it. And um, but we actually did, we didn't know, obviously, that we were, we were, we're not that so raven. We couldn't see into the future and know that we were going to be business partners one day, but we actually, uh, we were actually friends. Um, before we met in person, uh, one of our friends connected five girls and we ran a collaborative Instagram account. I was in high school and Ken was like her freshman year of college in LA. Um, and we, so it wasn't a business, but it was like, kind of like more of a, we had never met in person. We weren't like a collaborative yet. space. <laughs> yeah. So that's what we yeah, we met on Instagram and then a year later we met in person in LA when I went to school here. Um, and I feel like we've, we've circulated business ideas. We've obviously done separate things. And then I think we, you came to me about one idea another time. Yeah. Like we've always known that we like, we have very different strengths and very, but the same vision. We like the same things, yeah. but we're very, very different in the way we work and our skills and assets. So we always like, thought that that would be a good pairing, but we never knew it was actually going to happen. I feel like. Yeah. Well. And going back to your question, like I love working with my best friend. Like the fact that I get to see so many people go into a workspace yeah. and they're like sitting at their cubicle and like, it's some six year old man sitting next to them who have nothing in common with. Yeah. And I'm like, I love that. Like on our lunch break, we like run over and grab a salad and chat and you yeah. know, then come back into work. And so I definitely think having an office space was super help helpful mm -hmm. for like, our friendship because we were able to kind of like leave work at work and then we still go on double dates and we yeah. still do things outside of work that feel very separate from work like if daily drills was you know demolished tomorrow like we would still be best friends yeah. and i think it's developed even a stronger friendship because you have more trust more loyalty more um longevity and just like equity built up in the friendship yeah. so i personally love it i think maybe it could be more uncomfortable having hard conversations because at the end of the day you love that person it's not as much like you're like a, i'm more like empathetic which is probably a good thing um then and there's more like more at stake than if i just had a business partner and we you know split the business so i definitely True. think it can maybe make those conversations a little harder but like on the flip side coming out from those conversations or those hard discussions i always feel so much stronger and like affirmed of yeah. the foundation we've created if mm -hmm. that makes sense so I love that. Yeah. yeah and I, you know, I think there's, it's, it's amazing because I think with that part of that, I'm sure like from your experience, like there needs to be like with, regardless if you're friends or if you're a partner in business, 
there needs to be a level of reciprocity and balance between the two of you. And I'm sure you guys understand that. Um, you know, it's like not everything can't be on the back of like one person and, Mm -hmm. and there has to be this, this flow. And I'm sure like you, neither of you have an issue on like asking each other for help. If like you're finding yourself struggling. Right. And I'm sure that there's that piece of, uh, you know, I'm here, like you guys are going to scale and grow together. And I'm sure that's part of like the momentum as well, because I'm sure like, you know, clearly it sounds like you two are soulmates together and, uh, more fun to win together. I will say like, if it was just me or just Ralph and it's like, you achieve so much and you have no one to celebrate or share it with. Yeah. Yeah, I totally understand that. And that's the thing is like, you know, this, like what life is more than just work. But if, if you can be able to do this with someone you love, like it makes it so much more exciting. Mm -hmm. And you get to celebrate wins together. And I think that's, I'm sure something both of you love doing and going to celebrate together and obviously see your growth. Um, But talking about growth too, um, because I want to know, like, when you guys first started, like, what was it that you wish that you did that you didn't do? And what was it that you did that you wish you didn't do? What would you say? Probably a lot of things. I know. We're making it sound easier and like (laughs) more simple than it was. I'm happy we started when we did like we did not, we didn't wait until we had like the best product. Like we had a product we were proud of and we liked, but it wasn't like a super exciting product. Like it was black leggings, black biker shorts, white tee. It's self-funded. It's all we could afford at the time. We were excited about it and we were excited about like the, the brand itself, but, um, there definitely still was like so much, like we've just expanded so much. So I think like something that I'm happy that we did is we just started and we just like went with our gut and like put put our feet on the ground and started developing something I wish we would have like known or I think also I think it would be like to get an office sooner like to hire sooner like to trust in yourself yeah I think we kept being like oh this is great but like because we went from activewear to just like these oversized um crew necks and we were like oh once everybody gets a crew neck because we would sell out and then we'd restock the next month and we'd sell out like once everybody gets a crew neck like nobody's gonna want to buy anything more from us so i kind of feel like we were living with like a little bit of a scarcity mindset yeah um and like oh okay well we don't need an office or we don't need to hire and like once we kind of stepped into that we were like whoa look at how much more we can tap into and how much more capacity we have now that we've allowed ourselves space to grow into yeah I feel like we were confident at the beginning, but we were also like scared that it wouldn't do this again next month. Like yeah. we're like, oh, we sold a lot this month, but it probably wouldn't happen next month. Or like we would get excited for ourselves, but then we would think like, oh, but that's the best it's going to be. Yeah. Like we still have to, you know, pay $300 for our photo shoot and <laughs> us to be the models, you know? So I feel like just kind of trusting yourself a little bit more. And, and at the beginning we did like set up everything super like, we set ourselves up to be a big business because we're like, if we're going to start this and we want to be a large fashion line, we have to set ourselves up like we're going to go there one day. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think we did that at the beginning. And then when we started selling, we were like, kind of held it a little tighter. And and then now as we've seen, like it keeps growing and keeps evolving and the next thing keeps coming. I think now we like trust it more and are able to lean into that. I love it because it's also, you know, transcending that scarcity mindset of like there isn't going to be more. I think another piece that's also really important is to make sure you have the client retention and to in a way of like, how can you support your clients that have already worked with you in the past um, or purchased from you? I know for me, like, I think it's like I'm, I'm more service based than product based, but um I I think for me, it's important to make sure that I've cultivated a relationship with my customers. And that's like in the beginning, we were talking about like, well, what does the customer actually want? Mm -hmm. Because clearly if someone bought from you before and they loved it, they're going to, they're going to, you're going to cultivate that trust with them of like, Hey, like I bought this piece and I love it. I want to come back and get more. Um, So I'm curious to hear like, you know, how have you seen like client retention versus uh, new client outreach? And what are you seeing that you guys do differently? 
Well, I definitely think our customer base has been incredibly loyal. Like most of our customers are like repeat buyers. I was just looking at a customer the other day who had bought like she had 17 orders from us. We've only been around for a year and a half. I'm like, she's buying every single month. So I think our retention rate is so crazy high. It's, it's yeah, yeah, it's like pretty high. And I think that's something we really pride ourselves on is like continuing to offer value to those existing customers. I'm like leaning in to see what they want us to develop, what they're excited by, making sure that like if they had a bad experience with shipping or whatever, that we're making sure we resolve that. Like there's a lot that we do to really nurture those relationships. And then as far as like growth, um, I think we're not, we're not growing at like a crazy, I mean, it's, we're still building a lot, but it's not like so much that we don't feel like we can like nurture those clients and like bring them in and make sure they have like a really unique first experience or first touch. Um, we do a lot of like cool, we just shot in Paris. Um, and we did like, we gave away flights to Paris, like after it. And so I feel like we found like really unique marketing tools. Um, yeah. And like, and, and we've been scrappy with it too. Right. And we decided that, that we were going to be gonna give away flights to Paris like the day our collection launched because everyone was like I can't believe you guys went to Paris what was your favorite place give us a guide I really want to go I really want to go and I'm like yeah okay Ken 500 girls want to go to Paris so, so, should we send two and then we literally that day were like let's do it why not and then do it then so kind of like what do they, we call them like the girls or like <laughs> what do they want what, what do they want where do they want us to go what do they want from us and we kind of act on that just kind of in the moment spontaneously and yeah. i think that's helped because they can see it but our customers are like the most important part of our brand like we're not who we are if yes. our customers are excited and loving us and like receiving what we're putting out 100 percent. because i mean if we're starting this business like if you're starting a business and you're doing it for selfish reasons then you're gonna find yourself like yeah. with a lot more headaches i mean you're, we're here to be of service you know what i mean yeah. and i think if you're if your brand is so interwoven of being so ethical and sustainable in that sense, like I think that in a way is like, it's like service is above all else. But yeah. I think it's great when you're well, like what you guys were sharing with that marketing thing, because sometimes like you can plan on what you think like this marketing campaign is going to be, but then something better unfolds when yeah. you're least expecting it. Yeah, so true. And we're not like the type that are that think, oh, we didn't think about this two months ago when we were planning our marketing campaign for our Paris collection, so we're not going to do it. We're like, okay, we can just post it right now and, and do it. It doesn't have to be planned in advance. Obviously, a lot of things are, but leaving room and like space for the for the spontaneous decisions that really like that giveaway that we did, I mean, was the most amazing thing that we could have done for our collection and for our followers. And they were beyond more excited than we could have ever thought yeah, they would be they so just leaving space for those things and not being like so cut and dry and and planned out that you don't even leave any room for anything i think is important in life business weekend plans friendship all of that yeah yeah and i think like because to me like the thing about marketing like i said when i went to school for marketing when i graduated uh, I'm looking at my diploma right now, 11 years ago, <laughs> it's like over my head, but so much of that involves too. And I mean, clearly like we see, like if you're, especially with social media, like there's new things happening all the time. Like here's this trending sound on, on reels and how can yeah. you infuse it into things? Like you have to stay on your toes, but it doesn't yeah. have to be overwhelming in that sense. In a way, if you can shift that mindset to be like, this is exciting and it keeps it fresh. Yeah. Um, th that part Part is important but I also want to talk with you guys because I'm curious because I I do I love systems like I don't know if it's my one degree Virgo moon but like I I love systems and I love geeking out on like beautiful platforms that allow things to flow and effort then be more effortless so I can create more space like I'm curious to hear like what have been your go-to systems that have helped you really scale yeah so we, I mean, we say like constraints always promote creativity. Like if you have some sort of boundary, like it allows you to have more space to be creative versus like plan the best shoot you can ever think of. We'll be like, okay, this is our budget. Yeah, this, this is our yeah, those three constraints locations. allow yeah. you to be more creative. So I totally agree with everything you're saying. We don't honestly have a ton of like big, you know, org system software technology that we use right now. We actually, we, and we, we do like, kind of all have like our roles and responsibilities listed out. So we all know kind of what we're overseeing and what we're owning. And then 
when to check in with those other people to make sure that like, okay, that's going to be cohesive with what you're doing. Um, We actually still use, it's funny, a Google doc. It's called like this week and we update it every week and it has the days of the week and then we'll highlight like who's responsible for what. And then we'll have like a big marketing calendar um, that actually sits in the other room. And that'll have like all of our key things going on, any promos, strategy, um, sticky drops, notes. yeah, yes. sticky notes. So levers to pull if something's not selling, some anything like that. Um, we use later for Instagram to help organize the Instagram feed because the aesthetic is really important to us. Um, we use Clavio for emails, but that's not really like an org structure. So we use a lot of different things, but we're, we're still so small that we still are like very fluid yeah. in our processes. And we let like what works for us go. We're not like, Oh, we're this business. So we should have a diff. We shouldn't use Google docs anymore. Or Google sheets. Like it works for us. So we keep using Google calendar is amazing yeah. though. I will say yeah. in Google sheets. Yeah. We did this. Um, obviously we're planning products within for 12 months from now. And we have a, a, system that literally we created ourselves called our product pipeline and it has everything that we're creating what time we want it to launch the number of patches on it to what sizes we're buying it in to the, the photo cost, shoot samples to yeah the, it has everything listed in one line and so that's helped us obviously i've never worked in any other startup fashion company so i have no idea what another person would use which is super interesting to me but as i've talked to some friends it seems like everyone has different versions of the same thing yeah. Um, so just kind of not being scared to be like, I think this will work. And then we always like every few months, like add a column. Cause we're like, Oh, we might need this, you, yeah. you know, this descriptive, this description in there as well. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Cause I know like, I, I love Google calendar. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you guys have like, I have like 10 different calendars on my one. So it's mm-hmm. like, Hey, this is my get shit done. This is my content creatrix. These are my appointments. This is my self love. Yeah. And I think it's important to color code also to color code. I teach this a lot in my program, Alchemize Your Systems, because like I said, I love systems. But I think if you're able to color code yeah. and to have that piece and that structure really um, set up in that way, that way you can have a visual. So I don't know about you guys, but I know you're like brands are like green and like a gray. But I'm curious, like, are you seeing yourself using other colors that are a little more like organized? Because I think for me, like I said, that's a way that my eyes like better um, recognize and see of like, okay, cool. Like this is green. So this is money day. This is, you know what I mean? I'm curious to hear like with your calendar, like how are you guys really organizing that piece? Yeah, we definitely have like our own personal things on the calendar. different people that are in charge of different things on the calendar, but mm-hmm. I don't color pink just because I love pink. You're yellow, mm-hmm. yeah. right? So it's just like we, we do ourselves as different colors and then different, um, like our content shoot days are a different color than our podcasts are a different color mm-hmm. than our launch days. So all of that is super interesting, but colors really do help because then sometimes when I look on the calendar, I see a yellow dot. I know Kennedy has something at 530. I don't care yeah. what it is or anything, but just seeing the yellow dot helps like, it's just great for scheduling purposes too. So like, mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, cool. Like if there's something that I really want to get done before Ralph has an appointment at a certain time, like I know in the back of my head, okay, that needs to be at the forefront of today rather than like on the later half of the day. So I feel like it's allowed us to be more respectful of each other's times and like time off too. Like if I sit on the calendar, Ralph's totally. like, I'm not going to text her at dinner. Mm-hmm. Um, where before I was like, I have no idea what she's doing. I'm sitting at home right now, like dreaming about daily drill. So I'm just going to text her. Yeah. Help yeah because this thing called good hours which are nice my boyfriend like we thought do this it, thing we do it i make you do it and it's like from it's there's not a set hour <laughs> but like 10 p.m to 8 a.m you don't need to be talking about tons of things during those hours my roommate actually just said her new motto is you can't change your life don't try to change your life after 8 p.m and i just think that's mm. super interesting like have those gentle hours that like even Ken knows she'll obviously sometimes we have to text between them, but she'll be like, ha ha. I know I'm interrupting the gentle hours, but this or this or this, just so if you needed to say something, but like we have that mutual understanding that yeah. those hours aren't the priority isn't daily drills at that time. Yeah. It better be urgent. Yeah. <laughs> but the difference is I do want to say like, if you have like, I don't know about you guys, but I know if I get like a, like a creative, like a, like a download of like, oh, this may be something great. I'm sure you're writing that down because sometimes, yeah. and then if you don't, then you're like, oh my gosh, it was so 
how <laughs> this this passed me and went to someone else, right? Yeah. She's like, I'm texting you this. You don't have to reply. I just had to tell you, you know. So like, or I'll add it to the this week doc for tomorrow. Like, she'll come in and she'll see like four random things on the this week doc on under the day. She's like, what is this? I was like, this is what I thought about in the shower this morning. Yeah, I'll do that. Like on Sunday, this past Sunday, I did that because obviously I don't want to text her on a Sunday. Yeah, it, it can wait. And just like putting it, having somewhere to put it, or having voice that- memos, right? Yeah, <laughs> we're not voice memo girls yet. We need to what? Be- oh man, the voice memos are the way to go. Like I will totally just record. I'm like, okay, so here's this marketing idea that I have. I'm we're gonna crush this. Here we go. Or like, hey, them. this is I'm my podcast episode. <laughs> yeah, well, you could just write it. Yeah, right. You can just sure. write it or or speak it out. I don't know. I just think like too like they say your words have power. 100%. So like yeah, you can like type it out, but if you speak it out and you like speak it into existence, like in a way, I think you plant a seed in that sense That's as well. That's true. true. I never thought of it gonna, that way. I'm gonna be voice memoing you. God. <laughs> but then I, I want to. I want to know now. I want to know if you guys are gonna keep up with these voice memos now. I want to know. Be like, oh yeah, Sabrina told us about this. Maybe this is my seed to plant to tell you guys yet. Yeah, Voice memos are the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> I usually just call her. Yeah. Like, it's me again. But I think it's a little bit, I don't know. It, when I send a voice memo to someone, I think it's like a little bit taking out of their time because they have to be there and like listen to it fully, right? It's hard then. to be in the spot to like sit down and listen to it and receive it on the other end. That's my issue. Like, I can yeah. text, but like, I'm not rude if I'm playing someone's voice memo at the office in front of everybody. Yeah. Okay. So here's this, here's this. What if you're leaving this voice memo for yourself at yes. that moment? And then you, and then you re-listen to it and it like yes. reignites like and then it can extend further. Yes. So anyone who's listening, we are saying voice memo. I'm telling you, That's I'm nice. like voice memos. I don't know if it's, like I said, I'm a podcast host and like <laughs> I'm a speaker. So to me, like, that I, I, I hear back and I listen, or maybe I forgot about it. And then yeah. I'll look back through my voice memos. I'm like, wow, this, I'm still resonating with this idea that came through like three months ago. Yeah. Maybe I'll infuse it into like this quarter's strategy or something like That's that. So true. I love that. So I, I just wanted to plant that seed. Uh, you're welcome. Just kidding. But um, I just, it's just, to me, I just think it's important to also like really run with that inspired action because there's, there's a, there's like a, like I said earlier, it's like, you're becoming this divine channel and like, you're here to do God's work. You're here to live out your divine mission and purpose. And I think in a way, like if you can bring like for you guys, for instance, if you're bringing a more sustainable brand, like you're going to have to get out of your own way to hear because you're disrupting a pattern, just like you're breaking that stigma around friends and, and business. Like you're disrupting a pattern in the fashion industry that's going to uh, revolutionize the world, you know, and that's the big thing for me. Like one of the mottos that I work with my business is revolutionize the world with your medicine, right? Like mm-hmm. something that, that has made an impact in your life. Like you can, you can share from that space of overflow. And then when we can also be an observer of like what's going on in the world and that there's, there's like that fire within you that wants to be the change and to do something different. Like you have every right and all the power to you to, shake shit up and revolutionize the world with your medicine and do it with a a space of integrity. And I think that for me is, that's why like for me, for business, for instance, what I like, I like to help people dive into the depth of their soul so that they can figure out the very patterns and the limiting beliefs and the doubts and the insecurities that are getting them in their way from up leveling and scaling. Right. Because it can also be, I'm sure with how fast you guys scaled, like I'm sure that was scary. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that, though. That's so, so good. Yeah, knowing your limiting beliefs and then, like, helping understand those and yeah. get you on your way. And owning your own business, I feel like, brings up so many of those beliefs you have about yourself. Because when it's somebody else's business, you're like, okay, if it fails, like, I'll, I'll get another job. Not on me. But when it's your own baby, it's like you really start to like turn inward and reflect and be like, Ooh, why did I have that gut reaction about that? Ooh, why, why was I so anxious today? Like, why was I like a little bit short? And it's like never normally about the thing. It's always kind of about something deeper. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. That's why, like I said, no matter like any of my programs that people do, if you're working with me, like we're going deep because we need to disrupt this pattern. And because clearly like us, like you scaling or you going to higher levels, that's a pattern disruption in itself because it's you constantly getting out of your comfort zone from that space. Mm -hmm. 
So I think it's, I think it's important to like, like we started with this conversation, like, I think it's important to like, trust that, that deep inner knowing and the divine guidance and to cultivate that relationship within your, with yourself, with your own intuition, uh, having that deeper level of faith and understanding and that deeper connection with the divine so that you can really understand like, Hey, you're here for this short amount of time. Like this has been, this idea came to you for a reason. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to execute it in order to really make an impact and in a way activate a legacy that's going to, you know, impact and revolutionize generations to come? I love it. I feel so inspired by you. I receive it. (laughs) Amazing. Well, I've really enjoyed this conversation and I just want to close out with a quick lightning round um, set of questions. You ready? Yeah. Ready. What does sovereignty mean to you? Mm. That's a great question. I think this is a fire round, so I'm supposed to respond, but like that feels very deep. <laughs> um, I would say just like peace, like purity and peace are like the two descriptive words that come to mind when I think of sovereign or sovereignty. Yeah. I feel like tranquil like tranquility, peace really comes to mind. And I feel like that's sort of what you embody too in your podcast like I feel like we've gone deep and touched a lot but I also feel like at peace with all of that I think it helps awesome I love that what would you say was like the best book that really impacted your life hmm amazing what was the best concert you ever attended and that like really impacted your life? Justin Bieber for my 15th birthday. My dad took me and we went to Florida for it and it was the best literally wow. of my life. Yeah. Um, can I say Britney Spears? She was my <laughs> first concert and I feel like it really was like, if she can do it, I can do it. I mean, my I can do it looks a little different, but loved her. You, you can have braids in the office. It's fine. <laughs> I love it. Free Britney all the way. Yeah. yeah I, I remember when I saw, um, I saw In Sync, and who opened up for, actually, no, it wasn't In Sync. I saw Christina Aguilera and who opened up for Christina Aguilera was Destiny's Child when it was the four of them. That's hilarious. That's a good one. Right? Isn't that, yeah, those, <laughs> those, those things that really impact and just continue to bring out our whole perspective and idea in life. Uh, what would you, what would you want to say to younger self? Like what little nugget of wisdom would you want to share with your younger self? I'm going to be just to be kinder to yourself, like give yourself more grace. Um, it's okay to not get it right on the first time and like failure is it, isn't like getting it wrong. It's like not trying at all. I think I would probably say the same thing about be kinder to yourself. Like you're going to do it. We did it is what I would tell my younger self, but also like be kinder along the way. I think I was kind to myself, but I just think you don't take things too seriously. Yeah. I think. And where can we find daily drills and more from you too? Um, well, daily drills is shop daily drills.com and at daily drills on Instagram. And I'm at Mary Ralph. And I'm at Kennedy Critchlow. Amazing. And what last little nugget of wisdom would you want to share to whoever's listening that's out there ready to start their business, but maybe they feel scared to take that leap or whatever else is coming up that you really want to share after this conversation? I would say if Ken and I can do it, you can do it. Like I'm 25, Ken's 26. We've never done this before. We don't come from a background that would lead us here. I think if we can do it, seriously, you can do it. And and you should just take that and run with it and start now. Hmm. So if you're having this insecurity or this doubt of like, who am I? Who am I? Clearly these two have just absolutely crushed it. And like, I'm just say- going to say, ladies, like you've barely scratched the surface of what's possible. Like I wish I had that much awareness and uh, drive at the age of 25 and 26. Like that is huge. So I just really want to honor you guys. And like I said, I... I'm excited to see how you continue to answer the call and to really take this vision and this brand to higher heights. And uh, thank you so much for joining me and sharing with me everything that you guys have been witnessing and experiencing and really growing from on your journey. Thank you so much for having us. This was such a great way to start our Friday. Yeah. Wow. This was amazing. (laughs) We're so grateful for you. Thank you for having us.